everyone, and welcome back to the Love Like Crazy podcast. We're your hosts, Jay and Stacey Coleman. Thank you guys so much for listening in and following along as we're talking about all kinds of different topics on marriage and family and how to strengthen and have healthy marriages and families. And so today I have a special guest with me. Everybody, welcome, Santa Claus. <laughs> Are you saying that just because I'm wearing a red shirt and I got a beard now? I think so. I think oh, so. All oh, of a sudden, oh. we realized that you look a little bit like Santa. I did. So. Right, literally, right before we we started this uh, today, I'm like, you know, I'm wearing this red shirt with my beard. I kind of look like Santa Claus. So, um, um, but then also, um, it's been pointed out to us that we also look a little patriotic yeah, because I have I, on white and blue. Well, I do want to <laughs> say this much though: you're not getting any gifts for Christmas because you've been a naughty girl. <laughs> Oh my goodness! Okay, so those of who are listening, I'm probably, I'm turn, I'm probably turning red. Now. You are. You're as red as your shirt. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, do well, to, you want me to jump in here? Or are you going to jump in? Here? Well, I'm going to just tell yeah. everybody that it's recently, a little different today. It is. Why is it different? Well, because we've got some some questions that we're going to answer from different people. So why don't you tell them where the questions came from? Well, we had the awesome opportunity of hosting our very first love like crazy marriage conference at our church. It was a lot of fun. Um, in Louisiana. And so we had a great time. We had close to 200 couples that came out to be a part of it. And one of the things that we did was we asked them to submit some questions that they would want us to answer on our podcast. And so we have some of those today that we're going to discuss. And so if you were at our conference, I hope that you're listening and possibly we're answering your question that you submitted. And the cool part is we're going to each give an answer off of this. Mm -hmm. And I'll be a hundred percent honest. I've gone through the questions, just kind of glanced at them. I didn't really do a whole lot of preparation for this. A lot of this right. is just going to kind of be on the fly. Uh, and what I mean by that is just kind of answering right off the cuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, and you will hear my response. You will hear Stacy's response, and and kind of what we what we find in these questions. Now, before we dive off into this, I I want to say this to everybody. Thank you guys for helping to make Love Like Crazy the success that it is. It's been a lot of fun, and as we prepare to go into this, I'm going to ask you to do me a favor. If you would, uh, make sure that when you when you watch, leave a comment, leave a review. Uh, like, subscribe, share, let your friends know about this. Help us spread the word because really what we want to be able to do is we want to help people strengthen their marriages, strengthen their families. And as we go through these different episodes of this podcast, it's been so much fun just to kind of be able mm -hmm. to speak into people's lives and help yeah. them in yeah. regards to their marriages and families. Because it's always been our heart to to talk about different things that would build strong yeah. marriages. Absolutely. Healthy marriages. And, and I just want to thank y'all for for watching, for being faithful to watch and and to share with your friends and neighbors and relatives, every everyone you know as well. You guys are one of the ones that are helping to make this program successful. Yes. So thank so you. So we appreciate thank that. You. We appreciate Absolutely. you guys as our listeners. Yes. Okay. So are you ready to dive in? I, I guess so. I guess so. Let's uh Let's kind of lay some ground rules here for this. Oh, okay. okay. Let, let, the ground rules are this. Uh, some of the things that we will talk about, we're going to share our opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the things we will talk about uh, biblically. Some of the things that we will talk about, I'll give my response, then you can give your response mm -hmm. uh, to these questions. And and some of these things we're going to talk to you about seasonally, things that we you know walk through maybe early in the marriage as opposed to later in the marriage. Mm -hmm. And kind of lay that all out there. So we're going to simply call this episode Q&A. Yeah, like a Q&A spotlight on the different questions that were submitted. All right, so let's dive let's in here. Let's, let's do this. Okay, so the first question, and, and we want to say this as well, that we took a lot of the questions, and these are kind of more of the, the top I guess, or most asked. Yeah. What what I did was whenever I was, you know, Stacy handed me a stack of cards like this thick. Mm -hmm. And what I did was I went through them and and pulled out. There were a lot of duplicate questions. Right. There were a lot of questions regarding dating. Oh, the same topic. You know, same so topic, stuff them. like that. So we pulled those out. And so what we did was we kind of, there might be, you know, eight questions on how to date your your spouse. And so what we did was we took all those and just kind of put it in one question 
And so we're taking the most popular questions and working mm -hmm. our way down through the list. Right. And then there were just some random questions that people had uh, for us yeah. uh, that we may or may not get to. If you mm -hmm. don't hear your question answered on this episode, we apologize. But there were so many we can't yeah, call, you know, get to all of an them. An awful lot of So them. let's talk about the most popular ones. And so are you saying that this was the most popular question that was asked of all? Well, I think it's it was the top question that you... Yes, put on the list that you put on the list. Okay. Absolutely. So it was the number one question. Okay. So the number one question was, how do you date your spouse when life is so busy? Uh, I think that busyness is something that is a part of our lives for, for all of us. I've heard it said this way, that the greatest way that you can invest in your marriage, the greatest way that you can invest in your family is spelled T I M E time. Mm, yes. You've got to be able to, to take, to take time, to make time for your marriage and your family. I will say this, if you do not invest the time in dating your spouse, if you do not invest the time in having fun with your family and, and spending quality time with your family, you're going to have a lot of issues that are going to pop up throughout the course of, of your family and your marriage. Uh, and so most importantly, you've got to be able to make time for this. Don't look at it as like I'm taking time. Or I'm making time. Look at it as literally you are investing in your marriage. You are right. pouring because if you're gonna, if you're willing to date your spouse and you're willing to 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 have that time with them that is good quality time, that is going to lead to a healthy family. Healthy marriages equal healthy families. Mm -hmm. So if you're willing to pour into your your marriage, then it's going to help your family in regards. And I'll say this as well: your kids need to see you dating your spouse. Mm -hmm. Well, it's going to pay off in the long run because, you know, dating your spouse when the kids are younger, you know, later on when the kids have moved out, you need to have invested in being together and spending time together. Well, and I'm glad you brought that up because in one episode, we, we've talked about being friends in our marriage. Mm -hmm. uh, that was one of the things that we've kind of come across as we've interviewed people on different episodes of Love Like Crazy is that one of the hallmarks that kept coming to the surface, we yeah. saw this over and over and over. We would ask couples, what what has led you to the place where your marriage is so healthy? You know, you guys have been married, you know, 25, 30, 35 years. Mm -hmm. What has made your we marriage so all had so the same answer, and it's to be best friends. Be best friends. And we say that all the time. So we're, we're going to talk about that in, in another episode. And in regards to spending time with your spouse, I, you know, I was kind of leading in this direction. Your kids need to see you dating. Mm -hmm. Your kids need to see the value that you place on the marriage. Now, I do believe this in our society and in our culture, we have built our families around the kids. That is something that is not a healthy thing to do. Right. Your kids need to understand that they are not the center of the universe. They are not the center of the world. They are not the center of your family. Uh, Jesus needs to be the center of your, of your, your marriage and your family but the married couple needs to be the center of that household. And so in that regards, we are teaching our kids how to respect, how to honor those in authority, how to you know interact within a healthy family unit. And so I think that that's one of the reasons why it's very, very important for your kiddos to see you date. Mm -hmm. And so you've got to make it a priority and it may require you coming to the place where you Look at your your priorities within your family. Is everything centered around the kids? Is everything centered around their schedule? And if that's the case, that's not healthy. Okay, so the but the question is, how do you date your spouse? So you're saying time. You you well time. time. You've got you, to you have to make time. So it, this is my thought: if you schedule everything else with your kids, all the sporting events, um, all the different things that everyone has their own schedule, but Make it a part of the schedule to take time for one another to go out. I agree. I agree. On a well, date. I, I think that what taking what you're saying is you've got to be very intentional. You have to be. How do you date your spouse? You intentionally have take margin time, in your make schedule. Time, have margin in your schedule. Yeah. And you prioritize it within the marriage. So the next um, question, and there was a lot of questions that came in about date night ideas. So let's talk a little bit about. If we're going to date our spouse, even in the midst of the busyness and the, the hectic schedules, what are some date night ideas that would be good? <laughs> well, I, I know I know what I'm going to say, and you're probably going to echo some of the same things. Okay. Some, our favorite, some of my favorite dates were the ones that we would go on, and I would plan like a. And, and guys, I'm going to say this to you: Do not count on your wife to put together a romantic 
date night. Okay. Too many times we make that mistake and we say, you know what? Uh, I'm just, I'm, I'm the guy. I leave all that to her. That that's a cop out. Okay. I'm, and I'm not trying to bust your chops. What I'm trying to tell you is you need to be the one responsible within your household to constantly romance your wife and pursue your wife. Mm -hmm. uh, pursuing your spouse is very important as the man, as the husband, as the father, you need to lead in this regards. And so with that said, you need to pursue your spouse. Do little romantic things for them. You plan out a weekend. You plan out a date night and, and take her on. And it might be something that that doesn't turn out to be the ro most romantic thing in the world. That, that doesn't matter. She's seeing you put forth the effort, and that's what matters most of all. Let me go back to the question prior. So if you're going to invest in your marriage, you have to prioritize dating your spouse. Mm -hmm. No matter how busy you are, you've got to be very intentional. I like that yes. you brought that up. Very intentional. Put it on the schedule and make sure that it is a regular thing that you are doing as a married couple that you are making. It doesn't necessarily have to be a date. And you're making time for each other. Right, right. I know for us, uh, some of the things that we do that people might say, might say that that's not a date, but it is. But it, well, people think that it has to be you know, planned out so extremely romantic and, and it has to be, you know, a thought out a, a specific itinerary, but in actuality, it doesn't have to cost a lot of money. Well, it really doesn't have to cost any money to spend time with one another. I know that one of my favorite things that we do, you could say it's a date mm -hmm. is we'll just go on a walk together. Right. And we've got the perfect in, in our little road that we on down our little road that we live down it's about a mile walk each direction mm -hmm. so we'll leave our driveway we'll walk, walk all the way down the road back the other direction and back and we've walked two miles together we talk we right. cut up our neighbors have seen us do crazy things like me piggybacking you <laughs> uh and and they're like hey you know the, and i mean you know sometimes it's literally for exercise like you're like come on keep up the pace and we gotta keep moving other times it's like uh and just a nice stroll because the weather is nice outside. Yeah. And we live in South Louisiana. Some, you either have the extreme on, the on either or end, the, cold. the heat or the cold. Our spring is very short. Right. Our winter lasts about a half a day, uh, which is, is, is fortunate. But from time to time, we have beautiful days. And especially mm -hmm. in the summertime, even when it's hot, we'll go walking in the evening time. And to me, I know that you would say, well, that's not really a date. Yes, it is, because you're making time for each other. You're spending you're getting away quality from the time kiddos, together. Mm -hmm. Quality time. And you're able to, to talk things out. You're able to, to cut up. You're able to have fun together. Another good idea for you to go on, on a date with your spouse. I noticed this, that we would go out to a nice restaurant. Mm -hmm. And I, a lot of times I'd put on a jacket because I wanted to look nice. You'd put on you know, a nice outfit. We'd go out to a, a nice restaurant. And then afterwards, we would leave. And like, what do you want to do now? And inevitably, we would always wind up going grocery shopping. End up at the grocery store. Yeah, because we were out of groceries. Out of groceries. <laughs> we, to we don't have kids. We can go shopping. And so now we've actually made that a date. We go grocery mm -hmm. shopping together, her and I, mm -hmm. and we we consider that a date. Now, i got a tip for you. Do not ever grocery shop when you're hungry. You will fill yes. your basket up and spend a lot of money. <laughs> you don't need to do that. So... You can go out to eat, you know, before you go grocery shopping. It doesn't have to be an expensive restaurant. You can go to Chick-fil-A. That's God's chicken right there. Mm -hmm. Or mm -hmm. you can go to Taco Bell. Or you can go to a nice restaurant, whatever you want to do. But then afterwards, we go grocery shop, and we just enjoy, there it is again, spending time together, right. doing something together. Right. Well, you know, usually, or used to, we would, you know, go to a nice restaurant maybe go to a movie, you know, go to the theater or something like that. And that's not as popular anymore, though. It is a, a fun date to be able to do that. But even if it's just staying home and, you know, microwave popcorn and picking a movie that, you know, off of Amazon or Netflix or whatever and um, spending time together that way. Yeah, I remember one time, this was some years back, you know, they were, people were, were talking about our weekend. Somebody were, was asking me in the office, like, what are you guys? I'm like, we're just going to stay home and, you know, just chill out and watch Netflix. They're like, you can't say that. Right. I'm like, Netflix what? And they're and like, chill. you cannot say Netflix and chill. <laughs> and I'm like, why can't you say that? And they're like, well, that means, you know, and I'm like, what? Okay, whatever. <laughs> but uh, so we don't, we don't say that anymore, but maybe you, maybe you are going to stay at home and watch, net, watch well, Netflix that, that, and just chill out. That's and right. if it leads to other stuff. Praise the Lord. Yeah, that's so uh, that 
that's okay too. That's uh, part of your date night. <laughs> yeah. But let me make it, let me, let me give a, a little carve out here. Guys, don't ever go into a date night with expectations. If you oh, think that's good advice. just because I'm taking her out to eat to a restaurant or just because I'm taking her to a movie or just because I'm, I'm, I'm taking this time to plan a romantic evening, do not set yourself up for failure or maybe it turns into a big fight at the end of the night because... She's not in the mood. You cannot go into a date night with those expectations. You go into a date night with the idea of we're just spending time together. We're investing in our marriage and we are having a great wow. time together. Enjoying life, cutting up, liking each other's company. If it leads to other stuff, okay, praise the Lord. Yeah. But if it doesn't, you know, too bad, so sad. Well, just yeah, because sometimes you plan to go out to eat and then you you pig out, well, then you don't feel like being frisky after you've pigged out <laughs> at the restaurant. I'm too so full. You're too full. Right. So you just want to go home and not. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, or maybe the next morning you wake up uh, and, and you, you do. do. Okay. So, there you go. Uh, there you what, go. All right. Let's move on. I'm turning so, red again. So, yeah, I don't the, know why I get the like, same well, color as your shirt. I don't know why I do that, but it, we, even whenever we speak together at your church. Your cheeks are you, rosy, Santa. All right. <laughs> Even whenever we speak together at church, whenever we, yeah. we we kind of talk about this, I don't know why, but I do blush a little bit. Yeah, so you do. This shirt really you get more it embarrassed than I do, I, and I, but I'm not so, embarrassed. That's so I, strange. Okay, so Carlos, am I am I red? Is my, are my cheeks red? <laughs> okay, okay. okay. Uh, so, so with all that said, let's ideas. talk about date nights a little bit more in okay. depth. We're talking about simple date nights. So let's talk about more elaborate date nights. You said maybe going to the theater going out to eat to a nice restaurant. Mm -hmm. I know for us, we've gone to see shows before, maybe an opera. We've watched, we've gone to go see the, not the opera, the uh, Broadway. A Broadway show. Mm -hmm. uh, we've gone to go see the ballet. We've mm -hmm. and, I, and I'll be honest with you, I don't particularly care for the ballet, but I enjoyed it. You wanted to go. So mm -hmm. I, we got the tickets and we went and I actually had a good time. I thought mm -hmm. it was kind of cool, mm -hmm. but it was something that was out of my wheelhouse, but I went anyway because I knew it was something you liked. Mm -hmm. Now, on the other side of that... Would be sporting events sporting that events. the guys would like to go to. I remember we I've had someone... I've been to a Saints game. LSU games, things of that mm -hmm. nature, go Tigers. Now, I know that football is not necessarily something you love, but you no. went because it was tickets that we mm -hmm. got and, and you wanted to be and spend time with me. So, you know, those are things that you can do a little bit more, a little bit more elaborate, but a, a little, little bit, bit more expensive. Or a little bit more casual. A little bit more casual. You know. Yeah. So I think, I think those are great date night ideas. I mean, it too, it depends on what your hobby is or what your interests are. Right. Two things that I will never do with you. Okay. What's uh, that? I, I, I'm not going to the spa with you. I know that that's something. Oh, that we I, have I, done that. And that was... I, that uh, was not a good date, exactly. date idea. We at got. All. I remember she scheduled a couple's massage, and I'm just while the girls rubbing my back and my shoulders, I'm talking up a storm like, "So, do you like your job? You know, tell me about what the future so, looks so like you for were, you." You and were Stacey, talking a lot. I, our listeners are not going to believe that yeah. you were talking a lot. When you were over there, you were like, "Would you shut up? I'm trying to get a massage here and relax." I like there to be silence. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I go to the spa. So we discovered silence. at that point, no more, no more spa for me. No. Uh, the other one I will never do with you is scrapbooking. Uh, if you oh, try no. to set up like, hey, let's do a scrapbooking thing together, not going to happen. So that's just where that's I draw hilarious. the line. That's where I draw the line. <laughs> that's hilarious. So, okay, they're, they're asking for date night ideas, but actually date dates are fine too is what yeah. we're is what yeah. we're saying uh, let me give you a couple other things that we like to do and these these are just things we like to we do lunch dates together we'll mm -hmm. go get out of the office and go grab a quick lunch doesn't have to be expensive lunch either uh i've been as cheap as to take you to sam's for a hot dog and a coke dollar fifty you're telling for, all your secrets are you dollar fifty <laughs> per person so you're in and out of there for like you are women cents. offended at that. Like no, but, you will only spend a dollar fifty on your wife. Well, but think about <laughs> it. Some of our listeners are young couples. They're on a budget. This okay? is true. I'm thinking of everybody. This is true. This so, is true. but it, once again, it comes down to just spending time together. Right. Right. Like, yeah, because we run errands together, and that can be going to Sam's Club or grocery shopping or whatever, whatever it may be. It really comes down to once again, just spending time together. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So let's move on from this question. Let's move to another question. I'm going to end this question in this way. You have to be creative in regards to a date night or spending time together with you and your spouse as to something that you like to do, 
she likes to do, get mm -hmm. creative. Mm -hmm. uh, one of my favorite dates that we ever did was on a Valentine's Day. I think we talked about that in a past episode. We set a budget. I think right. it was fifteen dollars each that we could spend, and with that fifteen dollar budget, you had to get candy, you had to get a card, and you had to get a gift. And it, it was fun trying to figure out something for your spouse that you know that she or I am going to like, and it actually turned out being a lot of fun mm -hmm. uh, to be able to because you had to think about your spouse. So those are all fun little things that you can do. And so I just go go back to that. Be creative. So, Come up with creative ideas. So these days, though, their budget would have to be a little bit more than fifteen dollars. Uh, yeah, that was probably twenty years ago. Yeah. So yeah. you have to be, you know, a little bit. And so what we got for fifteen dollars was a sample a sampler of chocolate sampler, and then uh, the, Bought the notebook. <laughs> Well, the DVD of the movie, The Notebook, right? Nobody even watches DVDs anymore. Know, but but that's how we spent our, our money. Okay. okay. All right. So next question. The next question is, what is the best weekend getaway for couples? Okay. This kind of goes in hand in hand with, with but all this. For us, it goes back to time together. Uh, I know that one of our favorite things to do, we have a camp. And we love to just get away at the camp and relax. We will watch a movie together. We will take a walk together. We might go ride the ATV together. Uh, you know, she's been asking me to take her fishing. So that's another mm -hmm. direction that we're moving in this next year. It really just comes down to time together. Uh, we find it very relaxing to, to just kick back in the recliner, read a book. We find it very relaxing to kick back in the recliner and watch a movie together that we like. She likes it in the wintertime whenever I build a fire in the fireplace. So we're sitting outside around the fire pit. Uh, and it really comes down to just a place that we have that is our special place mm -hmm. that we like to go. It's quiet. We can relax. And you might say, well, well we don't have a camp. We don't have anything like that. So what do we do? Uh, you've got to find a place where you can let your hair down and relax together and enjoy each other's company. Might be on your back porch at your house. Well, my idea of a maybe a weekend getaway that I think our listeners are are kind of what they're asking for is maybe pick um, a town that's really close by that has a little something different. I think a weekend getaway is basically about a change of scenery. Okay, just getting away together, okay. doing something different. Um, and again, it depends on your hobbies and your likes. Um, I know that, you know, there might be some couples that like to go bike riding or, or you know, get away and go to the spa. That's not us. We're not going to do that. No more spas. But um, one of the, the little towns that is close to us, of course, we live in Louisiana. We're outside of Baton Rouge. One of the towns that, that is not too far away is Natchez, Mississippi. That's our town. And we went there actually on our one year anniversary. We was took not a, a good experience. Well, we we'll talk about that on a different episode, but they um no, have, let's talk about it right oh, now. Oh no, they have cute, <laughs> they have let's, cute. Just, let's talk about it right now. That was a weekend getaway. That was a weekend getaway and and so that everybody knows what the reason why I said it was oh, not gosh. a good experience. Uh, I worked nights at that time and I remember the, the, I booked this the first night we show up and we had had a good day, but I had worked the night prior. And mm -hmm. so we were going to go out together that night and Stacy went in to go take a shower while I laid down on the bed and fell asleep. And when she came back out, she's all gussied up, ready to go. And she could not wake me up because I was like out. Yeah. And so she got aggravated yeah. with me about that. It, now, the next day we got up and we went out, we did the carriage ride. We did some mm -hmm. tours and all that kind of stuff. We yeah. had, a, had a great time. Right. They have but, cute little shops there and, and uh, places to eat. And, you know, it's just a, a quaint little town, yeah. you know, like a, like a little antique village kind of feel to it. And so, um, yeah, I was, I was quite disappointed that, that one, that one trip which was our anniversary but uh but did yeah you have expectations i had expectations whoa. i did whoa <laughs> and, you, and you decided to take a nap <laughs> i did i slept the rest of the night it was some of the best sleep of my yeah. life okay yeah. so i think what i'm hearing you say is that it's valuable to just take time and get away together yeah and I, I like that, that you're getting away, you know, short distance away. It could be an hour, it could be two it's hours. It's just a chain, change of scenery, you know, to be able to um, just pick something different, a different place to go eat, a different place to, to go shop or, or whatever it is that you like to do. 
And it doesn't have to be expensive. Once again, no. you could do an Airbnb. You could do a Motel 6. Really? Motel, well, it depends on the budget, Stacy. Because they leave the light on for you? It, they leave the light on for you and the bed bugs too. Uh, oh my God. <laughs> It could. I'm not saying Motel Six has bed bugs. I was gonna say They're, they are not one of our sponsors for the podcast. <laughs> they so. are not. With that said, it could be a Holiday Inn. It could be. You the love Crown, Holiday Inn. It Inns. could be the Crown Plaza, as I've always said about Holiday Inn: quality room, quality price. So what that's you're what saying? You say? That's what I say. <laughs> Maybe they'll sponsor us one day. I don't know. <laughs> but with that said. It sounds to me like you're saying just to get out a change of pace, change of yeah. scenery, get away. Doesn't have to be expensive and just pick a place that could be an hour away, two hours mm-hmm. away, somewhere that you can get away. If you've got kids, you could get back home if you need to. Uh, I know for us, it could be St. Francisville is about 45 minutes away. They got bed and breakfast. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, you could stay in an Airbnb for Natchez. That's where we really love to go. It's about two hours away. They've got some other fun things to do. My, my favorite getaway is three hours away. Houston? Is that three hours away? Yeah. It's about three um, and a half. Okay, that, but I was also thinking about the beach. Okay. Yeah, but you don't like the sand. But yes, okay, so. But I go for, to the beach because I love my wife. Yes, that is true. So, yes, that is one of my favorite um, weekend getaways. We can just um, – Get in the car, drive to Houston. We love to go to Bucky's. To Bucky's, and we love to love to go to Papa Papa Cita's restaurant. restaurant. So yes, we get the fajitas and the tres leches. All right. the The point is, there are different things that you're going to learn to do together yeah. that you love to do together, and you're going to take time to do those things together. Let's get in the car and go to Houston right now because I'm hungry. Let's for go. Those Shut fajitas. it down, Carlos. Let's go. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Best now, we can get away. With that said, uh, and I say that a lot, with that said, so we're talking about date night, investing in your marriage, spending time with you, and I'm going to go back to this. Get creative and find things that yeah. you like to do together. Right. Uh, all right. So let's move on because we've only done two questions and we're already probably Well, we've 15, done three questions. Okay. So when the kids are young, how do you keep the flame lit? I think you keep the flame lit by prioritizing. Once again, I keep going, mm-hmm. kind of going back to that prioritizing mm-hmm. And when your wife sees that she's valuable enough to you as the husband, yeah. uh, when she's valuable enough to you for you to plan things out, to want to spend time with her, to do things with her, uh, you know, going run errands together, going grocery shopping together, going to eat together, going to just doing things for each other. I think that in itself kind of keeps the flame lit in her heart for you. And as a husband, your flame should already be lit. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, Once again, let's go back to this. You cannot do things with expectations. If that is your mindset, you could potentially be setting yourself up for failure. I know for me personally, the things that I, uh, the way that I keep the flame lit in my mind uh, between us is to constantly be speaking your love language, Mm -hmm. to constantly be doing things for you, to serve you, to constantly be looking for, you know, little things that you throw out there that I could maybe go and, you know, get that or or surprise you with it or whatnot that helps speak to you and tell you that I love you. Uh, words of, and, and I, somebody had asked a question about the love languages and I think that it's valuable. We know that everybody has a predominant love language, but it's okay to speak all of the love languages Mm -hmm. to your spouse. Mm -hmm. Uh, so for me, that's just one of the simple ways that you can keep the flame lit continually. And so if our listeners have not already, um, go and check out episode 20, where we talked about the love languages, because that definitely helps in all of our relationships, but especially husband and wife. And when you're speaking that primary love language, that helps in keeping that flame lit. For all right, sure. I want to know from, so I've answered the question, how do you keep the flame lit? Well, I think when your kids are young, um, I mean, you have to, I'm a planner though, but you have to plan out, okay, the kids are going to go to the grandparents for the night are um, we're going to put the kids to bed early and we're going to have that special time together if talking first yep. would be great uh, you know and then then it could lead to whatever it needs to lead to okay when you say leads to whatever it could lead to you know you mean romance in the bedroom oh yes okay all right so uh <laughs> woo! all right spicy <laughs> okay well speaking of spicy the next question is how do you keep things spicy after being married 30 plus years. Okay. I'm going to take this one and run with it. You talked about planning when you have kids, when you don't have kids in the household anymore, you don't have to plan. 
Right, and, you don't. And, and, let me clarify, because a lot of times what happens, you're together all the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's nobody in this world that I would rather spend time with than my wife. And so how do you keep things spicy when you've been, been together for 30 years? You better have spent the time investing in the marriage leading up to those 30 all years. All those different date uh, nights yeah, over and the years. You know, one of the things that we love to talk about is you better work on building your friendship together as a spouse. That is what keeps the marriage spicy. Mm -hmm. She's my best friend. I'm her best friend. In that regards, it means that we want to spend time together. We want to do things together. And that just kind of keeps the spice rolling. And if, if you're looking for me to tell you what the secret sauce is to, to make your marriage spicy, that's what I tell you. Be best mm -hmm. friends, do a lot mm -hmm. of stuff together, spend time together, and it could lead to spicy things. There you go. Okay. There you go. All right. Next question. Um, or do you, do you have do a response we, to that Do we question? have time for another question? Yep, we sure do. Okay. So the greatest secret to a happy marriage, that's one of the things that has been asked. All right. Do you want to answer that one or do you want me to take it? Go ahead. You go first. All right. Here's the, the, the greatest secret to a happy marriage to me is this. First of all, Christ has to be the center. Yes. Second of all, you have to walk together in unity. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not going to, you know, be very joyous or happy or whatever in our marriage if I'm constantly, if my, if we're constantly at odds with each other. Mm -hmm. And so unity is very important. You get into Genesis chapter two you see that that the very first wedding ceremony in Scripture, uh, God brings Eve to Adam, and it says that the man and his wife were united. They became as one. I think that in our marriages, if we really want to have a healthy, happy marriage, we need to be walking in unity. Mm -hmm. uh, it means we're going to honor one another. We're going to serve one another. We're going to make, I, I believe that we, we pray about things and make decisions together. So unity is key within your marriage, which leads to the third thing, being best friends within your marriage. Yeah. Uh, I think that it's very important that you continually build that friendship together when your kids, when you don't have kids, when you have little kids, when you have teenagers, and finally, when the kids are out of the house, you need to continually be working on your friendship and building mm -hmm. that marriage towards you being best friends with one another. And then finally, the last thing is this. And I tell couples this whenever I do premarital counseling. I could sit and counsel you for hour after hour after hour, but the most important advice I can give you is be led by the Holy Spirit in your marriage. When the Holy Spirit whispers something in your heart, do it. If He tells you to shut your mouth, shut your mouth. If He tells you to say something, say something. So be led by the presence of the Lord. Well, I, I definitely want to echo that all of that I agree with. Um, and my first thought was the greatest secret would be being, you know, being close enough to pray together um, and, you know, just being vulnerable with one another, yeah. you know, with, with things that we're struggling with um, different difficulties that we face, you know, I think communication on those issues is, is a huge secret to, to having a happy marriage. I, I like that you're talking about praying together because a lot of couples don't pray together. They say, well, I pray for my spouse. You need to learn to pray together. Well, it's important to pray for each other, but Absolutely. also to come together and pray together. Yeah. Well, I, I, we've answered quite yeah, a few quite questions. A few we questions. as far as we could today with this. And I just want to say thank you for, for letting me be here today, uh, all the way from the North Pole. Yeah. Thank if, you. For if, coming. If, thank you for coming in. Um, Santa. <laughs> All right. So, hey, listen, we hope that you guys have had as much fun yeah. today with this episode as we have had. Uh, once again, leave us a comment. If there's a question that you have, is there, if there's different episodes that you would like for us to talk about different things, let us know about those things. And once again, like, subscribe, share, help us yeah. get the word out as we are, want to be able to help people build a stronger marriage and a stronger family. So thank you for joining us today. I'm Jay. And I'm Stacy. And as always, this is Love Like Crazy.